Oh, I should say this meeting is being recorded pursuant of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting might do so in the following manner. Via Zoom and the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. So welcome everybody. This is September 8th uh, meeting of the district advisory board. And I'm looking for the agenda. Um, are we waiting for somebody else? We have a quorum, I think. We have a quorum. We just started, yeah. Looks, yeah, looks yeah. like Dee's trying to get in, Sue. Oh, she's in the attendees, okay. So, um, let's get started. And the first item on the agenda is public comment. And I don't see anybody on the participants, right? No. No? No. Um, so then we can move and there's public comment at the end. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, so we're gonna go over um, the minutes of the meeting of September 1st. I believe in the package, they are both on the 25th. But we had already approved them, right? The 25th, we had already approved it. So yeah. we're gonna go over, I wanted to clarify, uh, the meeting, uh, the minutes of September 1st. So does anybody have any comment? I have a few. Okay. Um, I had a few comments. Uh, thank you just for doing the minutes, even though you weren't at the meeting, <laughs> I'm sure. I hope it was interesting to watch. Um, and I really appreciate all the detail you put into them. There were a few clarifications, I thought. Um, that would be helpful. I don't want to spend a ton of time, but I'll, I'll try and go over them quickly. So on page two, I don't, I don't know. It might be helpful if we number, if the minutes get long, maybe if we number the pages. Um, so page two on the bottom, like under B, um, so packet material, there's a three bullets. So that second bullet, um, I mean, I did say that last sentence, I would just, I would ask that you take it out about, Tracy told us to hide the data sets um, with the zero population when looking at the spreadsheet. I just said you could, I mean, I didn't say you have to. And of course, what I found is when I was working on the maps, of course, we still need to like account for those things that are zeros and they make a difference. Um, and then, uh, so I would just remove that sentence. And then on the bullet below that, I thought, it was a little confusing your explanation and I had a suggestion for it. So there are unique identifiers for each census block. It's not that there are not unique identifiers. You just need to use the right ID. You need to use an ID that includes the track and the block. And as um, Mike had pointed out, like the, I think the geocode ID or the geocode 20, the 21 does that. So I just said, I changed it a little to just say there are census track which contains census blocks and block numbers can repeat in different census tracks. Therefore, it's important to use unique identifier ID like the geocode ID when working with and referring to the census blocks. And then I would remove the last sentence in that bullet about census tracks. Do you have this distinct identifiers? You just have to understand that there's both components in them. Um, and then under four, the draft of possible precincts, um, one, two, three, the third bullet down, it says Mike stated that the average for the 15 precincts would be 2618. Um, and so the entire Southwest precinct would be about hundred people short. So it's actually not the entire Southwest precinct cause that's like way over 
2600. It was just that my initial precinct that I created that had the 2512 in there. So I would just change it to say, so Tracy's initial Southwest precinct would be a hundred people short. And, um, and then on three or uh, two bullets after that, about um, that with the precinct drawing process, avoid moving precincts, you know, east and um, instead move them south. And so I think the point there might've just been that it would allow us more flexibility when creating uh, districts later, right? That like one of the issues that the charter had, uh, charter commission had when they were creating the districts is that there were, there weren't a lot of places where the different uh, precincts intersected or shared boundaries. Me too. So if we can have more connection points, it's really helpful. Um, and then just the last bullet, um, I wasn't sure what was where it said the board has no way of knowing for sure uh, certain rental areas are primarily student rentals, but Mike proposed he could get the rental data. I mean, I didn't know what Mike agreed to do or not agreed to do. Maybe Mike would remember more. Um, I mean, there is some data, you know, there is like the earlier census data about where rental properties are. Just because we identify them as rental properties doesn't mean they're student rentals. So, uh, and then on the on the last page, um, I thought there was just something like under B agenda moving forward, and I couldn't remember. But I thought with that last, you know, there's an empty last bullet, but we could just say that the town council has requested our final recommendations for the map by, and I forgot the exact date, I think it was around before like October. The document has to be in before October 15th. But you were saying that that's the map, not like our final report, right? That's my understanding. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the material. It would be good to have the report as well, because this is- No, of the, course. I mean, it explains like will, how we did it, yeah. The council will vote on this, and I think they will want to see the full report as right. well. Right. And then just, just like, this is just like a little typo at the end about that it's September 8th, not September 8th, like first 8th, but that's it. But, but thank you for those really minutes there, great. I have, I have one comment before we move on. Um, I'm not entirely, I, I don't know if we still don't know about if these recordings are gonna be like official, like officially documented. So since we're doing a lot of like hypothetical map drawing on like a GIS software. Is there any sort of, other than like what I've already been doing, any sort of specific um, information that we wanna get down when we're sort of doing that map drawing process that like we want like on paper since we don't exactly, a lot of what we're doing is visual, um, so. so do you, do you are suggesting to add the package to the final, to the final I'm, minutes to add the package material? I'm I'm asking like in minutes going forward when we're working on the drawing of maps, if there's any sort of specific information that you want me to keep in mind when doing minutes, so that like it's sort of you can comprehend what we're doing in the meetings from like the writing, like. I'm not sure what that exactly would look like other than what I've been doing, but. I mean, I, I think the packets, like the packets will still be available online, like even after the committee sunset. So people can always look at those, right? So the 2011 ones were still online. And so I yeah. think if the minutes just capture like the points where, you know, there's disagreement or where people agree on different points related to the map or something Great. that just try to summarize it. I mean, that's what we found in the 2011 minutes. The you know, question, it, it, go ahead. The Sorry. question I have is whether we should archive since the minutes is the official document, whether we should, that's me, uh, we should be archiving um, the package, the packet materials together with the, the minutes. Sue, isn't it archived? Well, it is, well, the old stuff's archived. Um, it'll still be there. Yeah. Um, how it's going to be there? 
I'm not sure how IT set that up from the past. I'm not. I don't have my town computer with me tonight, but it'll be there. It's not going to be not. Yeah. There. I mean. Okay. It, this stuff yeah. is always going to stay in this structure yeah. of you know within within the DAB and within the meeting dates. So I would just refer to meeting packet stuff. Okay. Um, that that stuff we have to keep that stuff. Mm -hmm. We have these going back into the 30s and for, 1930s and 1940s. So. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So anybody else has any other comment for the minutes? Tammy? I just have one. I can't find the minutes. I have gone through every single screen here, every email that I've received and every item on the packet and do not see September 1st minutes. It's, uh, I had that issue. It's, uh, it's called District Advisory Board 9-1-2021 minutes draft. And what category is it under? Agenda? It's in, the, it's in the packet for today's meeting, I think. Yeah. yeah. Is that right. so? The meeting packets. Are you on the DAB page? Yes, I am. Over on the right hand side. Um, Reference materials for all meetings? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. There's a one, a one, one, one above. There is, uh, there is a nine eight. 2021 link. Well, it's on the main page, packet materials. Okay. Click on All that. Right. Now I see it. I, I do want to say in general that I'm having a hard time with the way the references, the resources are put here. Um, I went through to find the interactive map because the thing that's listed as the interactive map is not that, it is something else. And I found 50 different references in about 20 different places. And so I'm, it's just very confusing for me. And I just, I just wanna point that out. Like we've gotten emails with information in them. The DAB homepage has different things in it. Uh, there's reference material for all meetings that have different things in them. Uh, each meeting package has things in it that are not, you know, like the minutes. I wish the minutes were all under minutes in, uh, the well, we've final, gone back and forth on this, so, <laughs> so it comes up one way. I, the, the, I, I gotta say that that I find the same thing as Tammy. The, uh, that this is very disorganized. That the way that this is set up is the poorest that I've seen for any organization. We we if in my business we take minutes for meetings every week. We have everything organized systematically. And this is not systematic. This is gibberish. And it, it, it needs to be reorganized so that it, is, it makes sense for anyone who's looking at it. And if we as committee members cannot find things and have to spend hours searching for things, then somebody who's not even involved is never gonna be able to find their way through this stuff. Craig, where would you propose? Um, so you're on the main page and there is a section for minutes. There is a section for packet material. How would you, maybe we can talk about this outside so, of the meeting on better ways to organize because this is how all of our boards and committees pretty much I think are organized. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy to hear what you have so, to say. My understanding is that the minutes has the final minutes after we approve them and they the package material has the minutes for us to read and discuss. So the package material has all the material that we're gonna discuss in the meetings. And then once the meetings get approved, they are archived on the minutes uh, link. Correct. Correct. Right? No, we yes. won't put something on the minutes link until it's approved by this committee. And all the material we are post, we are trying to minimize emails um, because then you lose information by trying to put all the material to be discussed in the package because there's a very short turnaround time. So the, the way of distributing information and not losing track is to put uh, everything in the package that we're gonna be discussing in one place for each meeting. Um, all right, I guess I'm yeah, I'm just so, going to say what I'm noticing is in 825, we had the state response dated 820. And in 98, we had the state response, which is 820. So we're discussing so, that 
I mean, I asked that it be put there because I thought just like the practice at some of the other committees, even the council, when the items are coming up over and over again, I wanted it to be in the packet for this meeting. Just to remind people, the, the thing is in the package, the idea is that somebody has requested to be in the package because wants to discuss the item so that we don't have to go back to the previous packages trying to find the documents, that you have every document to be discussed in this meeting in the same place, not to go back and try to find if somebody wants to discuss and brought something up to discuss, not to go back, start looking on the spot, looking back where you can find it, but to have it access it in one place for this meeting. Okay, that's, it's, just that's, con it's just confusing for me because I'm seeing things repeated. And so I'm trying to make sure I've looked at everything. And then I go back and see that I've already looked at it and I can't tell why it's appearing in places. So I get what you're saying. Um, the other thing is with the interactive map, I just want to ask really quickly on the front page, the interactive map is actually the census block comparison map. Is that correct? Because the interactive, the things listed as interactive map is a colorful map with percentages on it. I think that interactive map is the 2020 mapping. Um, they're all they're all interactive maps. You could call any of the maps that are linked to on our on the DAB committee page. They're all interactive in terms of I can, being able I can to rename that. Out. I can rename that to be whatever you want, um, Tammy. Oh, it's I, that was the first map I threw up there. It, it, whatever we want to name it, I'll change the name of it to be. But okay. that was just showing population distribution and grouping it into different colors. Um, that was the first map we had up. And so I, I called it interactive map so that we could, you guys knew that you could click on it and zoom in and zoom out, but um, it's probably I, worth renaming at this point. I, I guess the main map that I that it, I spent a lot of time searching for was the map that we were working on in the last meeting. And I found it by looking at the census block and then eliminating 20 10 and then putting in the precincts and I didn't it took me a very long time to figure out that that's how to get to the map that we were looking at and so I don't know if I wasn't paying attention and that's or if you can use that interactive map and get to that layer um let me look at something here so I, have I a, mean I, maybe too we could put that interactive map towards the bottom because we're not really using it as much anymore as like we've been working on the precincts I have a, a suggestion. We were talking about the minutes. I would like to close that item before we get, because we're going to forget about the minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to forget. Uh, <laughs> um, so would somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes pending the changes, or you would like to see the changes inst instituted before we approve the minutes and we postpone the discussion for next time? I move to I move to um, approve the minute, minute, uh, minutes with Tracy's suggestions. I second that. Okay, so I'm going to make a call. Uh, Joseph Gordon. Aye. Tammy Parks. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Craig Meadows. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Irene Hovne. Aye. So the minutes are approved pending the corrections. So now we can go back to discussion um, about the space organization. So, um, Mike, do you want to, sh to share? So the, the next item on, on the agenda is about announcements. And I think we can consider our discussion part of announcements that we need clarification of where things are um, or how to use um, the interactive map. Um, Mike, do you want to show how to use the interactive map? Um, yeah, so are we talking about showing the, the map that, um, that some folks used to draw precincts this past week? Is that what you're referring yeah. to? Yeah. I believe that's the one that Tammy is looking. Yeah, you're muted, Tammy. What is that map called? Which one is it? So let me, I'm looking up something, um, but I thought, did I load the PDF instructions 
for how to use this into the, I know I sent it to everyone in an email last week. Um, PDF instructions for how to use the interactive map to build precincts. Maybe we should have a link to that on our page or something. Like yeah, I'm looking map, for it. But yeah, I don't remember I, seeing it posted. So sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, was gonna, I don't remember seeing it posted. I just was using it from the email. But I also think that it might be, you know, if there's one map that we're really focusing on, it might be confusing to people if there's a lot of different maps up there. <laughs> I mean, that one right. map, Mike, you've added like so much functionality to it. Maybe that's the one we want to promote on our site. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we, maybe we um, pull the others down off of the main page and instead like put a reference in the reference materials. Maybe we provide links to the old maps, but we take sure. them down off the website since people aren't using them anymore. Yeah, I think oh. that makes sense. And does someone have the date that Mike sent that? Because I do not have it in my email. He sent it out on Friday, I think. And it was a PDF. Yeah, I'm looking at my email here. Friday at 2.02 p.m. Right. So it's um, the subject line is re 10 verse 15 precincts. Oh, okay. So that's that's within the package materials. I, I that was actually have, an email that Mike sent out. I don't have. I do not have that email. No, so I don't, I don't know if I didn't get it or uh, I categorized it incorrectly. Interesting. So I have I have Craig's email here, and I have Tammy's email here that I sent this to it's maybe it went to your spam folder or something um but anyway there is a document within the and i'll share my screen here um, There is a document here within reference materials for all meetings uh, called the precinct mapping how to guide. Mm. Okay. And in here, it's, um, and this is what I emailed folks. Um, I'm actively working on a map that can help us build our precinct boundaries. Uh, how to access the map, you click on this link um, and it takes you to a map. And I, I highlighted on where that link is on the web page. And then it was a step-by-step -step guide for how to go and draw and create your own, your own precinct boundaries um, and total up the number of people that you've selected within, or the number of sense, the number of people within each census block. So it sounds like a couple of people didn't, didn't find this material. Um, but I know, I know a few others did um, because that, that was how, they ended up producing some maps that um, are linked in the packet for this week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So, um, it, you said, so is that on here now? Uh, I mean, on the DAB website or no? So, if you go, oh, into reference materials. If okay, you if under reference you materials for all meetings, there's a reference, there's a reference guide here that says precinct mapping how to guide. And I, I sent an email to the committee, to the board on, on Friday at 2.02 saying, hey, I'm loading this into this area of the website. Okay, maybe you should check. I don't know if I need to check my email because I, I, I haven't gotten emails from you. I have gotten them from Peggy and Tracy. I don't know what you mean by, I haven't. The one from Mike was in sort of embedded in a stream um, that I think I started. Um, so it, it was a, a response to that. The 10 or 15 precinct. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I, okay. Still perhaps, yeah. perhaps while we're all here, we could decide on what the appropriate name for the map that will be, that we will all be using the, or the map resource that we'll all be using. Um, cause I think it's a little confusing the current name and if we made it a clearer, then we would all know what it was and anybody in the public who wanted to fool around it, with it would also know. 
Right. So the name still has 2010 in it, um, right. which that is still a layer, but maybe we just talk about, you know, well, I'm inter I'm in interactive map for creating precincts or something like that. Right. Or precinct oh. building map. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So the people, so that we all know, but also anybody coming onto the site would have some idea of what they should look at if they want to try to draw some lines themselves. And then if Mike's um, how to guide is like right below that link, that would be super helpful, I think. Okay. Um, and I was also wondering on the map itself, like when you're in the tool, like maybe is there a way to, I mean, I, th I think you said there was, but is there a way to as a default to suppress some of the columns we don't need um, so much, like at least from displaying? I would have to republish oh, okay. everything oh, yeah, yeah, no, from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And I have another question. Is it possible to be able to change the color of the layers that you create? Yes. Um, that would be very helpful because right now every layer that you create is blue. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I can I can look into that. And it would be great because I was, I think at some point I was losing, it was good to know which ones I had marked. But if you want to try different options, then you lose track what's right. what. But I had a I had something with the color where the um, the current census precinct. I mean the current precincts that the boundaries are like red orange or something, and that is the same color as the block boundaries, which I don't remember that from the earlier iteration of the map. No, but, it, was, it was true earlier as well. Uh, yeah. So. Um, okay. So tell me, you should, do you don't get any emails from Mike? Uh, you're muted. You're muted. We, we can't hear you, Cami. Sorry about that. Um, I, I search through all my email, all the committees that I'm on, and I do not find anything from Mike. I do have from Peggy, though, and I looked in those, and I don't see that. And I did look at the guide um, and used it, but I, I, I have to honestly say I had a very hard time using the map. I didn't know that I could draw precinct lines. I did not figure out how to do that. Um, I'm not sure that actually drawing lines on the map was included as instructions. It was more, my understanding was that you could choose blocks, um, groups of blocks, in fact, yeah. and then determine what the population in each group was. Right. That's, I think that's how you draw, that's how I draw precinct boundaries is by selecting those groups of blocks. Um, but there wasn't a tool, there wasn't a tool to actually draw the lines on a map. Right. I mean, correct. Like I was draw drawing them on. I was drawing mine on paper once I had calculated my blocks. Yeah. It, in fact, I didn't read the, that you could add up, so I was pasting everything into Excel. Um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, the producing the summary stats right here. That's how you you can yeah, sum up everything that you have selected. I'm, I'm impatient and usually don't read instructions. So I'm sorry, uh, that's my fault. <laughs> okay, so I guess for myself, what I suggest is that if Mike has time during the day, then you have to teach me how to use this because I, I could not have the counts come up. You know how you had the, the count at the bottom as you were marking off the blocks, it was giving you the count. I, could, mm -hmm. I looked through every single layer in screen and could not make that come up. Yeah, so I, I can... was doing hand counts of everything. And it's almost impossible to do that um, only because I couldn't draw the line. So I'm trying to memorize what I did before. Sure. So, yeah, so I would say I would email you and we can schedule a time to meet, but I'm afraid, okay. why, don't you, why don't you email me? <laughs> okay. And then I'll respond to your email um, just I'll for fear that. that I have your incorrect email address. Um, and then and I'll meet with you and, and we can we can go through a little step-by-step okay. -step training. Um, you're also, 
are you what sort of computer are you using are you com comfortable with a windows computer or an apple computer i have an apple i have a mac okay all right it, it's just something for me to be aware of because there could be something glitchy with a mac that i'm that i'm not aware of so it's just something for me to test on my end before we meet um okay. to see if there's something going on there all right i don't uh, know if craig wants to join us uh, that might be a good idea if that doesn't um if that's okay with the you know with the rules that we have to follow i don't know that it is um it's okay hey. it's no quorum and you're going to be discussing it also um as, I, it's my understanding that if it's just two of you it should be okay it's you're learning how to use a tool you're not tool talking about policies yeah and and i might have to do it during a lunch hour and i might have to do it on my laptop since i have to do it at work so but i'll talk to you about it personally mike and craig yep it's probably I, best to do it it's probably best to do it one-on-one -on -one because what you may be experiencing tammy may be very different from what you're experiencing craig so i think we should not try to do it um okay. in a group because I find that the wheels can fall off there. Um, so let's let's do it one on one, and I'll make I'll make time. You know, if we even need to meet on a weekend, um, I, I'll we'll do that too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And it is really powerful. Like I mean, Mike built so much functionality into it that I, it's easy to get lost. And I kept yeah. So <laughs> it's it's got a lot you can do for sure. Okay. okay. Any other announcements? No? Actually, can I jump in? Yes. I have been, I was asked um, at the last meeting to talk about the cost of 15 precincts as opposed to 10. Um, <clears throat> and payroll alone and this is cutting back because we don't have to do a checkout table currently, but I'm not sure if that's going to stay. But at the current rate, um, 10 precincts right now is about 14,000 for payroll. That doesn't include early voting, that's just election day. And um, so that would bring it up to um, somewhere around 21,000 for 15 precincts and that's only payroll. So I'll just give you an idea. So that would be for each election, there would be a difference of about $7,000 for the town. Right, for payroll only. So Just that doesn't payroll, include right. like coding and printing. Um, you know, they have to code the memory cards for the tabulators for each election. Um, and, you know, and printing the ballots. So you've got more ballots now because there's 15 precincts, um, different ballot faces, things like that. So that's going to go up. Um, some some things will stay the same, like, you know, we pay for van rentals and polling place rentals and custodial, things like that. That will stay the same. But um, the ballot printing, coding, the auto mark coding, that will also increase. I don't and know how much. That's just, a, just a question on what you just said. Um, the rental place and the van and stuff, that all assumes that the additional precincts are in places where we already have precincts. No, we have, it's a flat fee. We pay for the, it's back, actually based on mileage and time. So we, we get a van for a whole day. Right, but in terms of like renting a place to have the precinct, have voting oh, happening. Right. So right. it, it's the same cost as long as the new precincts are doubled up on the old precincts. Yes, yes, yeah. Tracy has her hand up. I think that's interesting, and I think we're segueing into Peggy's memo and so on. Um, just in terms of having this discussion, um, I think that it would be interesting, maybe, Sue, like if at some point, I mean, I'm sure the council or somebody might ask for this about just kind of writing it up, right? So we are down to one election a year now, I think, typically, except for in, I guess, presidential. Oh, there's primaries. No? Yeah, yeah. No, next year we've got two. Ever. So in the presidential November. primary year, do you have three? Yes. Because you would have the presidential primary and then the state primary and then the state election. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. 
Um, but anyway, one um, one other announcement is that D Shabazz got kicked off because um, her neighborhood is having internet issues. She said she would try to get back on, but she might have to call in. Thanks. So. Okay. Yeah, so, so if you can write that summary, that I think that can be part of our report or we want to have to include it somehow. Uh, I think um, if I would like to follow up on, and I think this goes again with Peggy's the item on the agenda or the brought up about the 10 percent on the package about getting legal counsel, whether um, we are so close to the edge um, and we know there must have been some undercounting, whether we are okay. So we don't want to go all the way on the past. We, we, we can keep this, we're gonna discuss it, but I think um, town council is gonna, town, the town government is gonna ask for this information, uh, but I think we want to have a whole package of information when we present whether we go with 10 or with 15, it has to be a whole package. So we have to have all the information as possible. And I did reach out to legal counsel and I'm still waiting to hear back. Okay, great. Um, I mean, it did seem right. So that, um, that email from the Secretary of the Commonwealth's office, you know, said that because we are under 40,000, that like technically we could maybe have just the 10 precincts if we keep each of them below below 4,000. Yeah. Um, but they did actually, I think it says right in that email to like check with the town council. And and one okay. question had come up too is like, I know somebody had mentioned in the last um, redistricting in 2010 that the Secretary of Commonwealth's office was concerned about some of the precincts that are like super close to the maximum. Um, so I don't know whether that's like, we might, whether that would be a concern as well. So Tracy, can we put that on yeah, hold until we, we sure. get to the package material and yep. the memo and maps? Okay. Uh, so if there, I want to move the agenda and um, be concerned about time. So um, the next item is about rules and regulations. So we have our standing item, whether we want to change anything and how the meetings are conducted. If nobody has, we can move forward and start talking um, at the packet material. Okay, so um, one of the items in the package material. So the package material has um, some information. So there are maps that were created by multiple people. I think Tracy, Peggy, and I contributed to maps, possible maps. So we went ahead with the idea of playing how to build precincts because I, we knew that, at least for me, was I knew that I wanted to see how it would look like um, because we have a short amount of time. And if we try to do everything live, I don't know if we're gonna make it on time. So I went ahead and played around and I created two maps, 10 and 15 precincts. I think Peggy created one with 10 and Tracy one with 15, if I'm correct. And then uh, there's the memo that Peggy wrote about the 10 precincts that essentially, you, Peggy, you want to talk about it? Um, sure, so I'm, I'm assuming you've read it. I. Um... I think it makes sense to check with town council. I assume, I think town council meaning SEL, the, the legal, yeah. to make sure that there isn't gonna be an issue with our doing 10 precincts. But um, if that is the case, and I suspect it is fine because they let, they set a, a limit of 40,000, they didn't set a limit of 39,000, <laughs> um, then I think we really should go with 10. I feel very strongly because I think it saves us a lot of money I think it saves us time and allows us now um, the ability to start actually talking about some maps that, that can work. Um, and then that means that we can talk about some of the other issues that we have to talk about, which is um, communities of interest and whether they're getting um, appropriately um, represented. Um, it allows us more time to choose what the districts would look like. Um, it allows us time to write the uh, report. 
And I, I just don't see any advantage really to the, I, well, I see one advantage to 15 districts, which is that with 15 districts, I think there are probably more options for how we, uh, sorry, 15 precincts, there are more options for how we draw the districts. Um, but I'm not sure that's true. And uh, I, I don't think we have the time to find out. So to me, it just feels like a very costly decision to go to 15, both in money and time. If, if we okay. uh, stick with 10 and we have, have the existing 10, um, do we have an indication, Mike, of, of uh, what the numbers are in the existing 10 so that uh, it would be easy to adjust? Can we see that on the screen? So Craig, um, there are two precincts, two precincts that are way off and they're not next to each other. So you need to shift everything mm -hmm. to too much. Um, yeah. So um, so both uh, Peggy and I played around with precincts, precinct mm -hmm. formation, um, trying to see if we could, one of the major issues, and this was my uh, question was, can we build the precincts and, from the point of view that they have to be under 40,000 with the census blocks, right? We are limited by the census blocks that vary between the widely random numbers, right? So can we build this, the 10 precincts with the census blocks as they are defined now? Because the census blocks also have changed with respect to last, mm -hmm. to the precincts that we had in the past, right? The, the, the census, the, even the precincts that we have right now, they will not align with current precincts because the census blocks have shifted. I, I realize I'm coming into this late. So yeah. I, you know, you, you, you're you way ahead of me on all of this. I just have not got a, a sense of what it, this looks like at this point. Yeah. yeah, and I'm looking in the, I'm, I know that, did we, sh I believe that was something that we shared in one of the first meetings or the second meeting, um, the balance of people per block. I can't remember. I'll have to, I'll try to find it, Craig. Um, I'll look through it now as you guys discuss Peggy, 10 versus have... 15. It is in one of the earlier packets. Yeah. Peggy, you have a up? Yeah. I just want to add one more piece to my argument, <laughs> which is that the, the reason that the state is capping um, how many people can be in a precinct is because they don't want to have overcrowding at the polls. It's a very reasonable rule that they have, that you can't have too many people in a precinct. But given the fact that we have so many fewer registered voters in this town than other towns of comparable size, and I'd be happy, I've been looking at the numbers, I'd be happy to give you a dozen towns that are similar in size and have fewer precincts altogether um, and far more people going to the to each precinct than we do. Um, I, it's, we we no longer should feel constrained by the spirit of the law, by the idea that we want to make sure that we're, you know, making enough precincts. We are making enough precincts with 10. So. I, I have a, uh, yeah, Tracy and, uh, okay, Tracy go first if you want. Oh yeah, no, so, um, so Peggy, when I read your memo, I mean, I completely agree about um, student voters and students not coming to the local elections. And I've worked, I've worked as an election worker for over 20 years in Amherst. And I've been in elections with really poor turnout. And I do think, I mean, I've been wondering about this 4,000 limit ever since like we started having so much more early voting, you know, and mail-in voting and things like that, because it seems like that would depress the number of people coming on election day too. Um, I mean, right now we're constrained to not go over 4,000 in any of them just because that's when the, in the state statutes and the legislature hasn't changed that yet. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if the legislature did that at some point. Um, particularly like, I don't think currently they've only extended the, the mail-in voting, the, early, the extensive mail-in voting um, until the end of the year, you know, for all of the fall elections and they haven't passed it yet, like permanently. But if they did that, that would make sense. So, so um. my, I, I'm going to play that a little bit. Have, okay. My concern, <laughs> I, I, I agree with that 10 would make, make sense, except I'm 
scared that I'm gonna build 10 and then the state said, oh, some of the precincts are 3,978 wow. and that's too close to 4,000. And we have not one, but multiple, we're gonna have to have multiple. I, I mean, that. yeah, there are a number of precincts that are less than like 10 away from 4,000, I think, yeah. <laughs> including so, yeah. Peggy's so, map, so. So, so my concern is um, that uh, I don't know how, how to approach because I, I, we, we need to ask the state for feedback. Maybe, maybe one option would be if we think that 10 would be the way, is can we have a preliminary map today and send it up to the state? Would the state approve something like, in the, like this? Mm -hmm. Because my concern is uh, we don't have that much time and we can spend weeks discussing 10 and they say, no, they're too close to 4,000. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not taking into account the fact that in the future we're gonna have development. So then they know, yes, Mike. So I would recommend, um, Irina, that, you know, maybe we don't, I think there's only, no, there's two 10 precinct maps. You created one and Peggy created one. Maybe we take one or both of those and we send them to mm -hmm. our contacts at the state. Um, yeah. John, John Barr, Uriel Molina, and William Palmer. And we send them to those three people and we say, hey, we're working under a couple of different scenarios, but with playing with 10, which is keeping the number of precincts, our numbers are approaching the 4,000. Do you foresee this causing a problem for us in the approval process? Um, and if we sent them that email tomorrow, I would not be surprised if they got back to us very quickly because we're not asking them to do any work. We're just asking them to kind of quickly right. glance at the map and the statistics that we have. No, I think that's a great idea just to get some preliminary feedback. I mean, the other idea I had is that, I mean, is that we could say that we've looked at 15 precincts too and we started to map it out. I mean, I even thought, you know, when we go to the council, we could do that, that I, just because like we do have a few versions of a 15 precinct map. And so I just to say that we've thought about the 15, um, but, uh, I mean, I think it would be a lot of work to carry like both of the options like going forward. Um, so, Tammy, I also agree with the ten precincts. And after reading reading Peggy's letter, I did think about the fact that two two of the places that I've worked as a warden um, have you know are either Hampshire College or UMass. And you know, for our state elections, um, you know, we we get the, our, uh, the number of people who come to the polls is very low. Um, it is higher during you know, a regular four-year presidential elections, but it's still not the entire student population. And so you know, I, I guess I'm just wondering why when we're making these maps of precincts that we're not also considering the number of registered voters. I mean, I know that for the purposes of the state, you don't do that, but I do think for places that have college, you know, 20,000, more than 20,000 college students, um, you know, that it has a huge impact on who's voting where, because students are not necessarily registered to vote where they're going to college. Uh, Tracy? Yeah, so um, to Tammy's point, so that's something I went back and looked at how the, char the Charter Commission created the districts from the precincts. And they did look a lot at the registered voter stats and also turnouts and competitiveness of races and a lot of factors relating to like how to have districts like where people would be adequately represented and there wouldn't be like great burdens in terms of um, people getting elected and so on. So, I mean, I think the, the Census Bureau just does it based on the population because that number Res registered voters is just so much more complicated, I guess, right? And this is just like a total number. But um, so, I mean, we are sort of stuck using that framework, but then I, I definitely think we could look at things like that with the districts. I think we are limited. So we, our task is based on the census. We cannot look at, for precincts, we cannot 
say about registered voters. We have to look at the overall population because we need, that's what we know. Somebody might not be registered today, but might register tomorrow. So we have to assume that everybody is gonna register and vote. There might be some issues, so we cannot <coughs> We might, as internal in, in knowledge, we might build the districts or build the person thinking that we have in mind that we have to build districts and we want to build districts that are balanced out. So when we are creating the precincts, we, the way I went ahead and created the precincts was trying to look at maximum connectivity between the different precincts. Trying to think how, if there, if we have big blocks of UMass uh, dorms centered and they, they, we cannot provide connections between other places, then we're gonna have a, good, a district that's only UMass dorms that would not be a good district for the town. So when I went creating some of the shapes, we looked, uh, maybe the state considers as fingers or more extended, just so that I could provide con connection between different precincts that we could build them more balanced in a more balanced way. Um, but we cannot say anything about the number of registered voters. Um, maybe in a memo afterwards, we will send to the state. That's why we are keeping the numbers high. But in principle, we cannot assume that somebody will not vote, right? We have to assume that everybody's gonna be a registered voter. Uh, Peggy? Um, so, yeah, so I too thought about that when I was making my map. And, and I think we really need to think about those zero blocks um, as ways <laughs> to allow those, those can easily be changed from one precinct to another and can allow for more connectivity. Um, but what I'd say about right now is, I think Mike's idea of sending the maps, a couple of maps off and getting immediate feedback is excellent. Um, when we don't have that, what is our best route forward? Like for example, how are we gonna spend the next hour productively? On I think I think the first thing is would be to look at the maps and see, get the okay with it from everybody else of the two maps that we <coughs> plan to send of the 10. Okay. I think that would be the first thing. And I know mine, I think I skipped one block. Somebody trace it. Yeah, you're missing one block that if you attach it to one of the adjacent ones, it goes over the 4,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know that we could tweak it and stuff. We can, uh, just, so they might need a small tweak oh, before sending out. Um, um, it, and, yeah. And that map also says 15 precincts, even though it's 10 precincts so, at the title, I think. Okay. Um, or, no, I got it updated. So anyway. the, uh, the, okay. I think we could look at both, I think for the next hour, so, so that everybody has an idea, um, would be to look at the 210 and the 215 that are out there to have ideas how, as, I, as a starting point, sending this in case we hear back like get everybody playing or tweaking these maps um, to move forward mm -hmm. okay. or create an alternative if people think they don't like it let's create an alternative but we could, I, could do well, both. I, I mean it. i would suggest to the state too whatever we send right that it's just a draft like that we've been working on different versions or something yeah um so that nothing is like final yet yeah I mean, they must have sent us, I don't know, Mike, did they, did the state originally send us a 10 precinct map mm -hmm. or no? They only sent us a 12 and a 15? Yeah, because right. the original <laughs> estimate was over 40,000. Was, so. was 41,600. Right, okay, I got it, yeah. okay. So, Mike, is there a way to, sh to share both maps, the two tens yeah. Yeah, at the same me, time? Yes, let me. Oh, that's complicated, <laughs> but. I mean, maybe. Share uh, screen. You probably have a big screen, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, it might look crazy on your folks' screen. Um, so we're pulling up, I'm pulling up the two 10 precinct maps, correct? Yes. I really liked my 15, but I agree. But I like also my 15. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the 10. But... Yeah. Okay. Bear with me. And as a note, don't let your 10-year-old talk to you when you're doing the maps. 
that's how I lost <laughs> my first version of it. That's why, yeah, there were so many revisions, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, and so, also with the go. map tool, it lets us see like when I saw the holes I had and stuff, it lets us kind of clean it up. So. Right. Can you guys see those? Look really nice. tiny. Yeah. Can yeah. you can Sorry. you kill the two columns on the right? Uh, uh, the the on the Adobe uh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. So on the right is PS, that's Peggy. And on the left oh. is ID. Yeah. So do you see, so that the one on the right, it says 15 and it's 10. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. On the title, but yep. yeah. I was doing these late at night. Give me, give me a break. No, well. No, thank <laughs> Just you. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So. Um, yeah, I'll edit that and republish it. Question on precinct 10 from Irene's map. It's a 6.09% variance that goes over the 5%. Yes. Well, so she needs to add, um, yeah, she needs to adjust it a little. So Mike, can you scroll down so we can see the correlation with the colors and the... Yeah, I'll try. It's, it's hard without... I mean, I, I guess know. we have to zoom out or something. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so... Well, it's so our arena's map. So if you look at the white um, polygons on her map, like there's a couple different ones. So that is actually that one that your pointer was at. That's a zero population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we could make that, you know, go away. It could be the purple yeah. or the brown. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the, the little one at Mass Ave, that's a population of two. Yep. Because that's the parking lot that shouldn't have anybody. And mm -hmm. then there's a couple other little corners like that seem like they like there's like one there's up, one up yeah, here that, that i think that's right probably here. zero too so that is actually 143 people because that's one of the dorms i think yeah um and so that is where um we need to shift that if it gets too. it needs to yeah so like you can't add it to the blue like the royal you blue can't color add to, you can't add it to because this that one. would go over but then so what you really need to do is adjust like the red brown a little bit and mm -hmm make it work. I, I can work on that. So my underlying thought on when I created this one was to create, try to create particularly around new mass areas that you can move in different directions um, for connecting precincts. Um, so. So I did wonder about your, um, your green one you're like precinct seven. So we had had the lengthy, you know, we'd had quite a bit of discussion last time about how so much of the population um, are um, students, like trying to have precincts that aren't just students. And yeah. it is really complicated in Amherst because I mean, my sense of the census data for Amherst since I've lived here for the past 20 years is that of Amherst roughly, you know, now we have roughly 40,000 people that around 22 to 25,000 people in the population are students. So like we're never, I mean, I know we had that kind of discussion <laughs> about it, but I mean, that's close to 60% of our population. So we're never really gonna be able to, um, you know, have a lot of non-student areas but no. it seemed like this one in particular it might i don't know mike can you zoom in on that like precinct seven so so my my idea when i was my idea was to when we made districts to be able to move down like all the bottom ones see how we can group them but having um maybe the purple one connect to the green one or the brownish one to another student because then you catch that source of non-student right. non-norms with the dorm. So that was my idea. So if you have them elongated, then we can each, we can start catching dorms with different. No, sure. But so, I mean, Mike, if you zoomed in on that one, like, isn't it? Because that one basically starts around like that precinct seven. Yeah, I don't know if you want me to zoom in on this. Or PDF, I don't know. I guess do I can. Zoom I can zoom in myself. I guess on yeah. like my own. But it basically goes. 
Uh, um, I mean, it doesn't, what's like the northern boundary of it? It's sort of. Of precinct, which of which one? Of that precinct. seven, of precinct seven. The north, so this this deal, this is um that would be like Puffton, right? And so actually, that seems like you know that that area is a little strange in that um, so they use the road through Puffton Village as a census block boundary, like even though so part of Puffton Village is to the north and part of it's to the south or things like that. I mean, I just found sometimes when I was looking at how the blocks were drawn as they they seem like they split up things that maybe shouldn't necessarily be split up and that and in other cases, I wish they had split them up more. <laughs> but um, so, I mean, I think that it's great that both of these maps, you know, basically work except for the 143 that just needs to be assigned. So I think those are good places to start with this state, but um yeah essentially i would have wanted to have all puffed on all together but um the numbers are so high that then no i understand it would have yeah. created whole blocks that you cannot it's all students um that was peggy you had a comment um i just wanted to speak to my map for a few minutes yeah but sure when we're done sure. no so um the way I approached this map was to actually try to keep the lines that exist um, as much as possible. And I know that I don't necessarily believe that we have the very best districts or precincts, but I also think that um, if you don't have a good reason to change something, then you're, you're going to annoy the populace if we make changes. So, so just I just wondered, like, can you make a map that keeps the lines where they are um, as much, you know, a lot? Yeah. And so that was one thing. And then the other thing is you'll see that very, you know, you'll see the Southwest block down there. It's the moon number 10, um, that very small one. Yeah, thank you. Um, that I also wanted to connect, be con as connectable to every other block, as many other blocks as possible. Um, so right now it, it connects to four and five and nine. But if we turn UMass, the campus of UMass is almost all zeros. So that can be easily um, mm -hmm. attached to act any of the blocks that it talks to, um, that it's next to. So it can, it can it be part of nine, it could be part of three, it could be part of one, which allows 10 to connect to any one of those three. So um, anyway, so I just wanna, wanted to give some background of where this map came from and the idea of trying to always keep connection points as flexible as possible. I think that's huge. That's that's yeah. Um, I, my my biggest concern on this one, I think, is that if we were to look into registered voters and people that go to the polls, you're gonna have a, a large majority in the blue area, and then then you're gonna have um, people might get this. I don't know if disenfranchised. I say that if you have the majority of registered voters group into only one district. That's why I wanted to have be able to have more registered voters in more districts so the the, the impact um, but maybe that's an assumption. No, I think that I think that's absolutely right. That is something we need to think about. Um, I was trying to to look at that. Yeah. Um, it turns out six, seven and eight are, are current six, seven and eight. Um, which actually is sort of the six, seven, and eight here as well, um, have the highest um, percentage of, or the highest number of people that go to the polls during the last two presidential elections. Those are the only two I, look, I looked at. I didn't look at the local elections so much. And so I think that's something that we really need to consider. Um, I will also say that those that only affects the local, the district councilors. Everything else is townwide. So the school committee and the at large and the yeah. library is all, all townwide. So not that those district councilors aren't important, they are, um, but it's not, it doesn't feel like as big a disenfranchisement as it might if there were more things that were based just on district. Um, and also, I'm going to say, I, li I live in, 
um, this, I live in the blue area and I decided, yeah, you know what? I wanted to try to extend district five, which is the lime green one in the middle one. I want to extend it down thinking about similar thing to what you were saying, Irene, Irina. Um, and that ended up moving my house into district five. And I looked at it and I thought, I don't want to vote in town. <laughs> now, obviously I will vote wherever, right? But but it, it just was a sort of a visceral reaction of like, wait, you're taking away my voting place. And I'm going to have to vote in town. That's much less convenient than Crocker Farm. And that's what I mean about we do need to be a little bit careful about what we do to what changes we make, because people will be unhappy. Disenfranchise, disenfranchisement is a really good reason not you know, to allow people to be unhappy, but just there is a trade off. So I will, well, I will agree with Peggy has said. <laughs> <laughs> we hear I mean, it all the time. So, so, I mean, it is interesting when we look at the two maps, like how many, and maybe Mike could, you know, share some of this data with us, but how, how, where they overlap a lot and so on. Isn't um, my, because my I mean, that of this is that the immediate exercise is, is to look at these and say, okay, let's send them to the state and see what their reaction is. And I think you know, both of these allow a lot of flexibility to do different things, but the question that uh, Irina brought up is, is the state going to accept it? Right. And if we want to try by sending both of these to the state and say, this is the direction that we're thinking of, are we going to have any problems if we continue in this direction as far as numbers are concerned? and get a reaction from it. I mean, so one thing with Peggy's map is I, I, I was concerned about how large the blue area is. I mean, I understand like how that happened, but it just covers, it covers, I don't know, it covers a lot of um, blocks. And I mean, I know a lot of them are zeros and small numbers and that's how it got to be so big. Um, but just that it is such a large swath of South Amherst, like including going, um, East, west of like going west of um south like 116 and so on so i don't know like that area is hampshire college and so like so that was an area that lost a lot of population right so um i think it went down like four or five hundred people compared to in 2010 um which is how that district was able to expand but um like i personally might try to maybe leave Hampshire College in with the pink and um, maybe expand the blue district like to the north a little bit. Even though I understand that the current, that that um, green district, whatever that is, the six that actually matches pretty closely with the current precinct six. But maybe extend it like along route nine or something. It just, that to me just like looks like can we come to an agreement that this that we can test the state with these? Though? Oh yeah, no. Can yeah, I'm trying to say, Tracy, that this is the way. That no, absolutely, absolutely. Simply saying, can we can we agree at least to do this one thing? Yeah, and test I think the we state? should. Yeah, and I think I think what the test is is Craig and and other other people as well is precinct two has yeah. three thousand nine hundred ninety seven <laughs> people in it. And that is, um, that's up here. Um, yeah. Precinct six, I mean, has 3,975. Precinct eight has, so, and it, they're all below 4,000. They're all below that. The, the question is, 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 is the state going to say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you know, that's too close. Let's. So I, want, I wonder, Mike, with that in mind, if we'd want to tweak them at all before we send them or. So I don't, I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't I wouldn't. Okay. I, would, I, I think this is a great dramatic example sure, of like sure. how bad it could possibly get. It's less than 4,000. That's the right. rule. You know, <laughs> well, it's, they're all, look at the balance here. That's what's great about Peggy's map. The, the, there's only one of them that's above 2% um, variance from sure, all the others. Yeah. The, the distribution mm -hmm. of people was very clean. So they, they're going to be very happy with that, but <laughs> some of those get very close to the upper threshold. So Mike, I would like to tweak, I, uh, I can do it offline with you, maybe help uh, to, to tweak the other map so that we make sure that it's, uh, I didn't realize I was missing one block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I can help you with that too. I can look at it a little um, bit. 
before sending it because if not, they're gonna raise a red flag because there's a six percent yep. there. Uh, but uh, I would like to send it tomorrow. We can work. Um, yes. On That's that. what I was going to recommend. I would recommend we get this email out as soon as possible so that we yeah. get a, we would get a response back and in the packet before next week's meeting so right. that we yeah. can, because we talked about it, we really need to start, if we can do 10 and we want to do 10, we need to start producing something, a, a couple different scenarios of 10 yeah. um, so that we can really hash out what we want to have and because we what we have two meetings before we need to deliver something yeah two, two meetings left so that's not much time so so my suggestion about, about time and procedure based on the two tens would be if somebody wants to have a go and create another one that maybe hashes out some of the issues that were raised today between large the big large the large one or make it too many changes uh, go ahead and we can discuss in the next meeting. But also at the same time, the other thing that we can do is if this one of, if this, either of these two maps were to stay, would we be able to have balanced districts? I think that's our next step because that has to be, although it's not part of our task, it's part of our task, but it's not uh, what the state is looking, the state wants the precincts. Uh, we need to make sure that we can build with either of these either of these ones. Or can we build balanced districts? And we, whether they can be balanced districts, not just on population because they have to be within five percent as well, but also about um, based on our knowledge of, of either registered voters or student population that we can estimate by looking. At the maps, we cannot know exactly for sure where the st students are, or right. um, but there are some there are some areas that we already know that are heavily populated by students. Yeah. Right? So well, and I would I be think, concerned too. I mean, I would want to tweak it on the edges, just like to try to make sure we're not breaking up neighborhoods and things like that. Yeah. But, so, for uh, example, I had one version on the maps where I was breaking um, many of the complexes on on. East Hadley um, Road, you said? East Hadley Road, were, yes. Yeah. East Hadley Road, and I had to redo to make sure. I started by building that block because in the end, it's a lot of population not mm -hmm. to break it up. Sure. Not to um, I couldn't avoid it on Pathton. Uh, yes, Craig? May I make a suggestion that we, um, I don't know if we want to need a vote to send these in to the state to get a reaction from them? And then we've got what about forty-five minutes left in the meeting. Um, yeah. Maybe we could we could spend twenty minutes tweaking one, and then twenty minutes tweaking the other one, having a discussion on each one. And I'm I'm saying send them in the way they are, but start playing in that regard uh, to see if there's anything that really anyone's adamant about changing. Okay. Um, there are two hands raised, Peggy and Tracy. Um, okay, two comments. One, just commenting about what Craig just said. I also think it, it's worth our looking at the 15 precinct maps yeah. a little bit today um, mm -hmm. and not, wait, not waiting until next week just in case the news from the state is bad news. Great point. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I want to say is that in terms of the neighborhoods, we know where the housing complexes are, like where the large apartment complexes are, but I don't know myself, and I don't know if other people do, if there are other communities of interest in the town that may not be defined by those. And, and that's something that we're supposed to look at. I mean, we're not supposed to just do it based on roads. We are supposed to look at, you know, making sure that we're not disenfranchising minorities or other communities. So I'd like us to think about how we're gonna get that information Soon. <laughs> yeah. Can, um, okay. That's so to answer, sorry, Tracy, to interject. Oh, go what, ahead. Can we, because we have some information, we, got, we have some demographic information um, for these ones, right? We have um, the, column, the other columns with some information about demographics. A little bit of race. Yeah. Yes, have a race. That's the only information that we have so far. Yeah. So we we could look 
um, uh, that information on these persons, whether um, mm -hmm. we're splitting, but I don't know how we're gonna do it if we're gonna be splitting um, a block, neighboring blocks, if we look at neighboring blocks as if we're splitting, or I'm a, I'm a, I accept suggestions, I don't know how to do it. Um, so, I mean, I think, go ahead, Mike. So can I share something with um, regarding the demographic stuff? Can I show a couple of things that I've been working on to, I, I don't know how to most effectively display this um, to you folks and to the public, but I've been working on um, a way to kind of show race. Oh, let's see, it's not showing. Um, and show it in a way that would, Amherst is the vast majority of, I forget the exact percentage, but it, I believe it's like 66% white, white alone this time around. Um, um, so I'm trying to, I was trying to show the data in a way where it would show concentrations of other, other races. Um, and so what I ended up with is showing standard deviation um, for each race. So this is Black or African American alone. Um, and then I did that for each race that was, I, di I didn't do it for the ones um, that are two races or more, or three races or more, just because that would, I would be producing 200 maps. But I did this, and I don't know if this is the most effective way to display this um, sort of information. So are, are the numbers, are they based on the percentages or like an actual count? The percentages of, like... of the block or actual count, yeah. The, these numbers are, it's based off of the count per block. So, that's a... so it's a count. So because, right. I mean, we could have an area that's like a small precinct I mean, a, a small block um, population wise, but it could have a large percentage of a certain group or right. something. Right, right. And, and you didn't, um, so you were just doing it like race by race, but so this is gonna be people, I mean, I think it's, it, it's important. I think how many people identify as more than one race. Absolutely. And also with the Hispanic origin data too. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, not, you know, to merge some of, but not to merge all of those different categories together, but the way we have them now, they're, they are pretty general, like they don't represent, I know somebody had brought up, you know, the Cape Verdean community and different Hispanic communities in Amherst, right, and we're not going to capture any of that because we don't have that 2020 data, and it won't be available, I think Mike, you had said last time, right, it wouldn't be available for like up to a year or something. Um, but even just to like see the parts that have like the most diversity, what I had found when I was looking at the numbers earlier is, you know, and I think you're seeing some of that too, is that like some of the biggest counts are gonna be where the students live just because of the sheer number of students. <laughs> like, so some of the high density dorms are gonna show like the largest number of people of certain races or something compared to, because, you know, in that one block, you'll have, well, we have that one block that has 2,500 people, or you have the other block in, um, in Orchard Hill that has, you know, 15, uh, 1,200, 1,265 people. And so those numbers are going to be some of the highest, like on the block level, I think, but um, yeah. I mean, I think it is good to look at those too, for sure. But, I, but one thing is if we stay with the map of 10, um, that we just are not gonna have much flexibility in terms of like adding and subtracting blocks, you know, from the different precincts because we're just so close. Like even though we could go up to 5% technically, which is, you know, 5% of almost 4,000 is like almost 200 people, but we can't do that because we can't go over the 4,000. So, I mean, I think that's one reason that like Piggy's variances are so small. Um, they have to be. 
Yeah, they have to be. I mean, because we have like this upper ceiling. And so. Okay. Yeah. I so, mean, I, I so am I, just, sorry, go ahead. Mike, can you share those maps anyhow, whatever you have? So then I think one way, even if it's not our, um, it, it would be a first approach on how to overlay with our maps to make sure that when, when we have high concentration, we could see if we, we are putting a line in between one of those uh, areas. One, one of these, yes. like an area like this, yeah. Yes. Yes, I can, yes, I can share this. So I have a question about what we're, that's why I'd raised my hand before about what we're sending to the state. I mean, I, I like the idea of sending two maps. I mean, I, you know, I worked a lot on a 15 map and I could, come up with a 10 map. I don't really want to send the state like too many maps because like with the 10 maps, I'm a little afraid that they're going to be like, well, we like this one and not this one. And, and so on. I just, I want them to sort of endorse the concept <laughs> of it. But I mean, I think we could maybe share with the state too, that we've also drafted 15 maps of 15 too. I mean, they had drafted one for us as well. We're just, I mean, just because we currently have 10 and with, there's no way for us to go to 12, right? Even though the state had recommended we could go to 12, we can't do that because we have the five districts. So, I mean, what do people think if we even tell the state that we have maps of 15 or we share those maps or, I don't, I don't wanna to send the state too much data and sort of muddle the message. <laughs> but. I think if we wanna find out if we can do 10 precincts, we send them a 10 precinct map. Okay. If we um, if we send them a ten precinct map and a twelve and a fifteen, then they may very well right. write back and say we want you to do the fifteen, yeah. even though legally we may be able to do the ten. So I, I think if we're trying to find out specifically whether they would approve a ten, we should ask that. Okay. And I have but a I suggestion. Mean, oh. But I mean, they did say like in the letter before that it said right according because our population, the letter that um, Irina had received, that it does say it would appear that we can remain at 10 because we're under the 40,000. Yeah, but so. so Mike, you had a comment? I would, I would, one of the things I would recommend Irina is definitely, you mentioned this in one of your previous emails to the state, definitely make note, please respond via email because what they'll do is they'll, they'll call me <laughs> they'll call they'll call sue they they would much rather prefer to pick up a phone and talk to somebody about this instead of go back and forth via email so, um, so i prefer via email because then we absolutely absolutely i i completely agree but i'm just just telling you with other projects that i work on this group with they'll they they'll okay. call me on, on my drive home okay <laughs> okay great <laughs> so uh peggy has suggested that we take it before we go back to looking at the, these two maps that we quickly take a look at the 215 maps. So on the right is Irina's map and on the left is Tracy's 15 precinct map. I think it's vice versa, but on the no, left. No, mine, I, is, in, mine oh. is on the right. And mine's on the left, yeah. Did I yeah, say that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm con yeah. uh, and yours go, again, I went with the elongated shape. That's the overall shape of Amherst, right? No, yeah, it's true. What, I mean, that's how we end up with that, yeah. Uh, Joe? Uh, I stated this earlier in the meeting, but I just have to head out a little bit early. So I'm going to okay. head out, but I'll finish watching the meeting and get the minutes back. Right. We still Thank have you. quorum, right? Yeah, I think so. We still have five, yeah. Be before, uh, Craig? I was just going to say, before he goes, uh, could I make a motion that we send the two 10 precinct maps to the state to get a sense of whether they're going to accept it or not? Somebody wants to second? I can second it. 
Uh, Craig Meadows? Yes. Terry Parks? Aye. Aye. Uh, Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tracy Safian? Aye. Irene Jovene, aye. So, and Joseph already left. Um, so we're going to send the 210 precinct maps. And we're just going to tweak yours, right? Just yes. to make that 143 work. OK. Yes. Um, but um, so on the 15, um, sometimes it's harder to make uh, because the numbers are smaller. And again, thinking about connectivity, I have some weird in the one I created. I had this some that weird uh, shape, and it was mainly for connectivity and just to make the bottom um, boundary. So the one, if you can see here on the left, there is one that is very elongated and thin. Yeah, um, I, it was the only way I could get to not go over the limit. But I think, so that one, I think that precinct, I mean, that block only has like a population of 12 or something. Isn't that right? Yeah, but I, yes, but if I didn't have that, it was uh, <laughs> under the 5%. No, so but I, I'll, I yeah, no, but I'll say too, I think, so when I look back at how the 2011 redistricting was done, is that the state really didn't like, like elongated shapes like that <laughs> very much. Um, just uh yeah i mean unless but, you had unless there was no way around it like with the big dorms and stuff that you had yeah all around it is big dorms so whenever you, you oh, would, i understand yeah you would jump um my thought was okay we can incorporate that one with others to create the mm -hmm. district then the district would look whole and not finger you sure that would be the justification So the great, the good thing about both of these maps is that both of them, all 15 of the precincts were below, on both maps were below the 5% variance um, either way. So um, shape would probably come into the state's play. Um, this one is just weird because there are no residential areas in that in that strip on the west right. side. Don't we uh, think I've, that it should yeah. be a zero? We think it should be a zero. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and I um, confirmed that with multiple. I mean, one of these is the the vacant office. land across from Southwest. Yeah, that's right. the post office and Big Y and CVS exactly. down here. Yeah. And then no, up sure. here, there are 12 people in, I believe that is completely vacant land, like all the way down to Amity Street. It's UMass mm -hmm. property and like the parking lot to the football stadium. So it's just, that's it's just correct. egregious errors that lead to that shape. Right. Um, but, but I needed those, those 12 to, if not, I was uh, more than yeah. 5%. So I. Yeah. <clears throat> but I guess so, no. Mike. So when, when this, when the Census Bureau, I guess, will fix some of, like, we'll tweak the map and address some of the places where population should have been assigned to one block and it was assigned to the adjacent block. Like in the case of what you had mentioned, the at Southwest, right? There's a dining hall that has a population and a dorm mm -hmm. that doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, like when, what's the time frame, time frame for that? Like that wouldn't really affect our process. I mean, I guess the thing is, I mean, that, of course I realize that like that's down the road, but it's, is it possible that that could mean that some of our blocks could go over or something <laughs> if they if they change it but. yeah i'm not sure i don't think they'll change it unless we tell them that there's an error there um i don't think they're going to go and just change the population per block unless we point it out to them which and even if we did i have no idea how long it would take for them to kind of resolve that sort of issue that that could be another question that we ask the state in the correspondence and, and what is the what happens to like with some of those zero blocks like it seems like sometimes there's a lot of them like in an area do they i mean in some of them they seem like they're just like sort of abandoned slivers or something this do they clean those up in between the censuses or do they, do the number always grow of blocks or? 
Um, I don't know the answer to that. I've okay. never, I haven't been here in Amherst long enough to really, to really see that. Um, but I can go see if I can find it. No, I was just curious. And so also in that letter from the Secretary of the Commonwealth's Office, right, they did say, because Irena had brought up the question about if there's an undercount, and um, I mean, the town is not pursuing the idea of an undercount. We cannot, uh, the, the undercount, my understanding after looking at the documents is that they don't recount. They only think that we do, they would stay with do changes on the census is to shift populations around. So if the census okay. blocks should not have a zero and whether the limits are right, whether the, the, there are some issues with the borders, but my understanding right. from reading, and that was my reading, was okay. that these are the numbers we cannot no, I mean, but they had mentioned in that last paragraph, like it says that there's an appeal process or something. Yeah, but the appeal process that. is oh, mainly okay. for these errors. That was my understanding. Uh, okay, Maybe somebody it. had a different read of that. Uh, so regarding the maps, I have a comment, and I don't, but I don't know if anybody else has a comment about the 15 maps. Go ahead. So my, my concern is, if we were, so these are the alternatives. And um, by looking at yours, Tracy, uh -huh. my concern is that we kind of are, um, we have this point here in the center where many uh, precincts touch, but there's not a significant overlay so that if we actually, we are kind of limiting the way we can build districts. Oh, I yeah. I think I feel like because have, because I feel because, like there's a lot of connectivity because the the light green cannot go. The light green can only go with one, two, three. The dark green can go with more, but the the so. Um, the the student population, the heavily areas where the student population would not be able to be more distributed. I'm going to end up with some areas that are going to be more heavy student than others. Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like, I mean, I I was maybe I was grouping them a little bit. Um, I mean, I think there's yeah. always going to be limits on how they can be grouped. Yeah, I'm um, just given the shape of Amherst. And I, I mean, it seems from what I've seen, like both the 15 precinct maps and the 10 did a better job of of in the past uh, compared to in the past like when there really aren't that many connection points right um yeah so i mean i still feel like i mean the fact that almost every except for on the south and the north that like most of them connect to like a good number of um precincts i think that that does give some flexibility but because you have to group them you are sort of limited to <laughs> like you know and because of the shape of the town yeah so um I feel like it's sufficient, but I, I think we're coming up against a uh, basic yes. truth here, which is that there, because the population is so heavily focused in one area, we can either have a lot of possible ways to connect um, or we can have a map that doesn't have fingers, right? I mean, that in order to yeah. In order to be able to, to spread that central population out to the outer edges of the town, we need fingers. And that's what Irena's map gives us. Um, if we wanna have more polygonal shapes to our, our, our precincts, then we have something that um, Tracy gives us, but then it's much harder to spread that population beyond the um, sort of center of the town. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I think you could see some of the same with like the 10 precincts. I mean, and that's a question too, right? The state has brought into question, like when you create a lot of little fingers, like are they necessary or are they not necessary? Like we can't create fingers just because we want the connectivity. I think it's like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the justification for creating them is from the state's perspective. It's It seems like you know, one justification is just when there's those large populations in a block and just trying to deal with it that way. Yeah. Um, 
and I know on my original version of my map, like there was one, I did clean it up a little bit, um, but there was one precinct. I mean, there was one census block that one of the dorm ones that had the 1265 from Orchard Hill and it barely connected to the other um, ones in its uh, precincts, like in its, in the one that I was still assigning to the same precinct. Hmm. Like it would, you know, it was a very minor connection and whether the state would be okay with that or not. Okay. So. So um, it's 737. So we agreed that we're gonna be sending the maps. The question is, do we want to look now on based on the information that Mike has about a little bit of the demographics on the 10 to see whether they would agree or we leave that as a homework uh, to try to come up. I mean, I feel like our efforts might be best. I mean, this is my perspective, but just waiting to hear back from the state um, and seeing what the state tells us. Because if the state says, you know, this type of map is acceptable, this type of map isn't acceptable, or 10 isn't, I mean, it's just, all those other numbers are gonna relate to like what we hear from the state. And okay. I mean, I, I am anticipating, you know, it could be possible as we're working on some of the details that we could end up with some meetings that go longer than two hours, like if we have to. Um, so maybe we could have a meeting that ends early. Okay. Which is not really heard of in Amherst, but I, it's a nice thing, I think. And I'm sure yeah, but I want to make Mike, sure that, and I don't think that people. Are, I want to object. make sure because we only have more or less two, meet, two, two weeks, two meetings so, to kind of find. So, 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 I, so go ahead. I would, I'm sorry. I would get, like us to, I don't know, give us a little bit of homework for all of us. And this is, okay, let's assume best case scenario the state says go ahead with the 10 and either of these two maps would be acceptable. Maybe we don't get that answer. So I think the homework for us would be, for both of us, for all of us would be, A, think critically from, would people feel, how would people feel comfortable with these maps and then we can discuss it. See, you have a different idea than another map that can work. There are infinite number of configurations that can work on this, probably not infinite, but a big number of configurations that we could make work. Um, is, is there a better option than these ones that we were created as starting points? And two, at the same and at the same time, let's look at start thinking if we consider these two okay. Can we build districts uh, that are balanced based mm -hmm. sure. on this one? As because that uh, it's gonna that would it's gonna inform us whether we have to tweak again the precincts because if we cannot build districts, then uh, we have an issue. Uh, so I think that that would be the homework. Okay, we can okay to fi let's finish early the meeting, but let's give us ourselves our homework so that we do offline. What we're waiting, like a um, mental experiment, can we build based on these ones? Can we build different districts that are balanced in numbers? Yeah. Right? And so in population can, as much as we can. Yes, Tracy. So could you recap again? So we need to submit a report to um, the council by what, like the 12th or something, right? They The 15th, they have to be inside, the council has to have everything by the 15th. The okay, by the 15th. And so, so if we go back, like that's over a month, that's not, but so, was it because we were saying that we would spend like a few weeks working on the precincts and then a yeah. few weeks working on the districts or what was your thinking? No, my thought was that we, once we had a map, we wanted to hear one from the state. Right, okay. Again, so one is the state we want to hear. We don't know how it's going to take. Two, we want to make some, I would like to make some noise that people know that these are maps out there and, and to get feedback as much as we possible can. Um, so that's why I wanted, because the 15 has to be the final version. So maybe even have some preliminary that we can share around 
So then the council knows that it's coming and that's the shape. And we don't want to have um, the council say, no, we don't approve it. Right, sure. Right? Uh, so that's why we have to have some time maybe to share around and I have more input from the public about this map. So that's why mm -hmm. I wanted to have more time. All right, I don't wanna be the last minute and they say, no, start again. Um, and also the issue of the state, because we might have to send, um, we're gonna tweak them. I think I would like to hear again from the state, the final version that we submitted before submitting, right. get a yes or no, maybe not final approval, but maybe you're in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, I mean, if the state approves us to have 10, um, I mean, I would like to look more closely at both of the 10 maps and just think yeah. about, I mean, yeah. you know, not to, I mean, there are places where they overlap a lot, you know, yeah. and, but, but just I think to think about like where they're different and what makes sense. And, you know, it is, I think it is, I mean, you got, you both did like amazing jobs, like balancing all the numbers because we can't even go to the 5%, you know, with the cap. So, yeah. Um, so, so that's why I want like a homework is like, let's look at this map while we are waiting to hear. Right, uh, right. Let's look at these maps, assuming that the state says okay with them. And I think we would need to like in our final report, even if our report itself or our memo to the council is pretty small. Like, I think we would need to at least show them that we had thought about it. Like I, I know with the charter commission, right? They actually mapped there were nine different configurations that would work with 10 precincts to create five districts, right? Yeah. So I think we would wanna actually have like a list of all the options <laughs> and then, you know, the ones that we've, we haven't gone with or whatever. Yeah. Just to, to show that the, to show the council and then the state as well that we went through like the process of looking at everything. I mean, so. Okay. Well, hopefully we hear back from the state, but. We, they're normally pretty good at getting back to okay. us um, pretty quickly, especially since they know that we, we are basically the ones that are taking on this work. You know, the, a lot of other communities, they're doing this work for the communities. Mm -hmm. They should be pretty responsive to us since we're doing, we're doing all the legwork here. And if they're not, we just, we continue to um, continue to follow up with them. Um, right. And. And I guess if we got the something from council too, council SEL, like saying it's okay, then mm -hmm. we can proceed, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we break away, I, I did make um, a couple of changes to the website over here on the right-hand side. I put in maps and data, and then I create, I used what Peggy said, precinct building map, um, nice. precinct construction map. I don't know what to work, whatever you guys want it to say, we can make it say that link there. Um, so I made that edit um, and then I'm going to create a kind of a document within the all meeting um, thing that it's basically a, an index of all the different interactive maps that we're creating. And so that somebody can go there and click on links to kind of get to all of them, but I'll keep this area right here very clean, that this is our working area. Um, this is the raw data. So that if somebody in the public wants to download it and start playing it within themselves, they have access to it. Um, Peggy, I, Mike, can I, you say raw data? Raw data? Yeah, that Maps would be Maps and raw data. So then it's Well, here. even that, to label that census 2020 block data, like raw data, I think, or something, just to make sure that it's not, a like, people understand it's not a map or something. Sure. Yep. Um, yeah. but then if there is a way, I mean, I think that that, um, little tutorial document is super helpful. Oh, to put it and right that, here beneath this. To put, I would put it like almost right there just as an explanation, just sure. because, I mean, I do understand what people are saying about how, you know, some information's in the packets, but then also yep. when you go to the packets, you can't get back to the committee yep. page. And I mean, just to make it like super obvious. Yep. No so. problem. Um, just making that note. Um, and then Peggy, I'm going to... Um, republish your map because I, as people pointed out, I did it too late at night and I put 15 precincts up here. So I will fix that. I'll republish this map. It will look identical, same colors and everything. It'll just say 10 at the top. And then that will be the map that we send to the states. So Mike, I had a question just like in terms of, 
clean the on next to the um, on the table with precinct two. Like, what is the road there? That's, oh, this yeah. right there. Yeah. What is that? That's just yeah. That's just a label for East Headley Road. I can hide it. Wait. That's, yeah, because that East Headley. I'm sorry. Road. That's, um, I'm sorry. That is um, what does it turn to? That turns into um, North Hadley Road. North Hadley Road. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's over here on this map. Hide that. It's just <laughs> yeah. well, it's in Hadley too, right? So we can. Yeah. We can pretend. So, yeah. Yep. Can hide. Um, and then Peggy and Craig, I've I've sent both of you a one just a separate standalone email. Uh, I know Craig, you've received it. I said Peggy. I meant Tammy. Uh, Tammy, I I don't know if you received it. Um, but just reply back to me with days and times that would work for you to connect, you know, half an hour probably would work. Um, and I'll make it work, whatever suits you folks. Thank you. And if anyone else needs help. Um, trying to find a way to build something just just let me know and we can connect mike can we set up a time um i think it was gonna be easier can we do interactively the tweaking in this area yes can i set up a time afterwards i send you an email yeah, to set absolutely. up absolutely yep thank you just send me an email and we'll get it done sooner than later thank you okay so um well, I'd be happy to help with that. I mean, I was looking at it a little bit. I just didn't have time to. Well, no, if you want so to go, to your ahead, map, go ahead. So with that 143, I mean, so we need to just fill in the two zeros or the, you know, that that zero. Yeah, so that's the 143, which is the smallest one. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think, I mean, it might, I can take a look and just see if there, we can get the numbers to add up or something. Is okay. there... Is there a way, Mike, that you could send the like some kind of table or something? Not the summary table, but um, the list like with the block groups that shows. Or, yes. I can, I, or, or, I have or, or maybe you can show it. Yeah. Okay. I can send you the spreadsheet that uh, okay, I sure. sent to Mike to create. Okay. It. Great. Does now does it still have a different tab for each um, precinct, or did, were they merged into one? Table. I merged okay. them into one. Okay, I merged got them it. into one. So okay. okay. So can you send it to, to Tracy then? Yeah, yes. that'd be great. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So Tracy, if you can take a pass. Sure, I'll take a look. Break, yeah. Because tomorrow morning I'm teaching, so I can <laughs> I can uh, of course I, I send my stuff too late at night too. So I cannot it's do it's it an tomorrow illness. morning. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Okay. Um well, and thank you for contacting the state. So, so, so then, yeah, so if you take a look at it tomorrow afternoon, I can send it yeah. to the state. Sure. Yeah, I'll Thank confirm, you. I'll confirm with, with you, Irina, when everything is all set on the website, because then what, what you should just be able to do is just send them links to the PDFs. You don't need to attach them because you can just link them to the ones that are on the published on the website. So, okay. Um, okay. Cause the state's email system is very, very, very finicky that they'll reject attachments um certain attachments and things so sending them a link might be better okay we can talk about that um, because i want to make sure that we only send them the link for the 10 and not the 15 so yes we, i don't want to send the link to the package because then they see everything right right well i can i'll i can i can send the links to you and then you can basically use those links to send to the state so that is that that would be perfect. Thank you. I don't think they'll go looking through our packets if we don't tell them about the packet. They'll mm -hmm. just yeah. <laughs> look for the direction. OK, great. Um, so um, we made it to 750 in the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we made it. Um, so I don't see any participants. Uh, we don't have any public. Oh. So, so am I correct that we only have our meeting scheduled out for the next two weeks? Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So I can send a new call to Phil so that we set up the future meetings. 
wait for an email that's going to come probably later in the week or in the weekend. I don't think I will, uh, when to meet to set up the future three meetings after this one. Okay. So we'd probably want to have, I mean, after, well, if we had to keep meeting every week, we'd have two meetings more before the um, so before the deadline with the council. Yes. Yeah, so I gonna send for those two and even one after we in case we have to revise something between the council that has to vote. I would like to have three meetings scheduled sure. just in case. Okay. And now I uh, just a logistical question um, with the council. I know that they're um they're typically required and they might want to do this anyway. Um, they, they typically review something twice before they vote on something substantive. So they were considering scheduling another meeting on the 25th to vote on this only. Oh, okay. Then we had a communication and that was. So they would meet on the 18th and then they would meet again on the 25th and. Okay. Yes. All right. So then, then the following then, week so is then, the so following then, week is the election, I guess. So so then I, I'm wrong. So I think it has to be five days in advance. So maybe the dates are wrong. Not is the 15th, is the 13th that they have to be. I have to check. Well, I think the 15th would be the Friday, but we would probably want to give them something sooner. I, th I think they have to be five days in advance if I'm not wrong. That may be my mistake. I can, I'm going to check on that. And then if their meeting is on the 18th, it has to be by the 13th. And I mean, and I, mean, I guess too, we could have an option if we weren't done with the memo or something that we could present the map and then on the 18th the and then between the 18th and the 25th, we could like prepare a memo or something. Yeah. But... Okay. Tell me you had your hand up. I was just going to confirm that I have that our next meeting is Tuesday the 14th at 6 p.m. And the following meeting is Tuesday the 21st at 5.30 p.m. Are, is that correct? Um, and that's then what I have. Yes. And then the 29th or whatever the following week is not scheduled at this time? No. Okay. So we had only, we had done this for three weeks. So I, that's why I'm going to send now for the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So somebody wants to make a motion. I move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Craig Meadows. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Tony Parks. Aye. In the I. So I see you next week. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night.